And now, introducing that sculptor, painter, and chiseler, Mr. Jack Benny. Hmm. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny chiseling, or talking. And, uh, uh, say, listen, Wilson, let's get a couple of things straightened out, will you? I don't like those introductions you keep giving me. No, you don't. No, I mean, I didn't like that word chiseler. No, give me that dictionary a minute. Now, let me see, uh, chiseler. Chis, chis. Here it is, chiseler. A parasite, a person with no morals. Oh, well, that's all right, Wilson. I... I thought you were accusing me of carving statues. You know, I guess it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, Wilson, you and I have been together five weeks now, and I can't tell who's the comedian on this program. No, really, I'm afraid this show isn't big enough for both of us. That's what I think, Jack. Where do you want your mail sent? <laughs> <laughs> I got them that time, folks, did I? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. At that, I like you, Don, even though you wouldn't give a dime to see Venus de Milo play piano. Oh, I didn't know she played. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, Jack. You know, I paid the taxi fare over tonight. The meter was 60 cents, and I paid it. Say, what are you kicking about? A good meter is worth 60 cents, you know. And by the way, Jack, before I forget it, uh, thanks for those two passes you got me for Central Park. Oh, don't mention it, Don, really. <laughs> I, you know, anytime you want to walk down Fifth Avenue, let me know. I can fix it, you know. Uh, say, by the way, Wilson, uh, what nationality are you, anyway? Well, my mother was Irish and my father Scott. Oh, you have Scotch and Irish blood, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, now I remember when we went to dinner together the other night, your Irish blood wanted to pick up the check and your Scotch blood interfered. I remember that. <laughs> hello, Charlie. Oh, hello, Mary. You look tired. Where have you been? Oh, I just came from a dance. I danced four hours and I hate it. I thought you liked dancing. No. All it is is a lot of hugging with music. Well, Mary, didn't you enjoy yourself? No, you know how I hate music. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I can imagine. See, I went to a dance last night myself. You know, one of those places, you know, the 10 cents a dance. You know? How much did you make? No, Mary, listen. Wait a minute. The girl, the girl gets the 10 cents. See? Oh. So what's your favorite dance, Mary? Well, I like waltzes, foxtrot, chocolate, vanilla, and raspberry. The last one is a nice dance, yeah. That's good. Hello, Bester. Did I sing my song yet? No, Parker. Well, then I'll wait around. Oh, hello, Frank. What are you doing here so soon? I just came from a dance. Well, that fits our routine of talk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of a dance? Huh? Ten cents a dance, but it only cost me a nickel. Why? I've got rheumatism in one leg. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I don't get the point. Isn't that funny? Very funny, Mary. Uh, say, Jack. Yeah? I gather from your conversation that you are discussing a uh, trip to call. That's Don Bester again, folks. Eh? <laughs> you know, Don, as an orchestra leader, you should know all the dancers. What are the latest dancers? Well, right? I should say that the Shim Cham Shimmy and the Uptown Lowdown. Oh. I like the tapioca better. Dum, dum, da, 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 tapioca. Tapioca? Dum. What's it? Yes, it's a great dance and makes swell pudding, too. Oh. Oh, she reads karaoke. Have it your own way, you little cut-up. <laughs> Say, Wilson. <laughs> Wilson, uh, listen, do you ever dance? Oh, occasionally. Well, Don, then, uh, Mary, you ask him what his favorite dance is. I haven't got the heart. Go ahead. What's your favorite dance, Kurt? The general tire glide with the non skid movement of the silent safety press. It runs on 40% less air than any other tire and gives your car a perfect rhythm. Paging Jack Benny, paging Jack Benny. Here I am, play Don. <laughs> that, that was karaoke from the motion picture Flying Down to Rio, played by Don Bester and his blowout crew for tears. Oh boy, am I hot tonight. Huh? Well, here's a telegram, 85 cents flex. That'll cool y'all. Hmm. See, who can that be from? Well, well, it's my old friend Sam Friedman in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, here's what he says. Big crowd here for Kentucky Derby. Hotels all filled. What a mob. They came by plane, railroad, and thousands rolled in by, uh... What's this, Wilson? I can't make it out. Uh, let's see, Jack. General Tires, I think. <laughs> that was my fault, folks. <laughs> uh, what's that telegram all about, Jack? Well, it's my old friend, Sam. You know, the fellow that gives me a tip every year on the Derby. He's right on the ground, you know. Get this. He says, um, I've been watching the workouts, and I don't see how Cavalcade can lose. However, Matta Harry will take all the honors, 
if Sir Thomas doesn't beat him. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Sergeant Byrne wins the race. <laughs> How's that for a tip, fellas? Huh? He also says that agrarian speed more and singing wood might upset the dope. And there's a horse called Bazaar that also has four legs. <laughs> Don't forget to play these horses as they can't lose. Your pal, Sam. Well, we can't go wrong, fellas. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, they gave me so many good horses, I don't know which to play. Say, hey, Best, Bester, uh, who uh, who do you like in the Derby? Well, I like Cavalcade. Why, Don? Well, I saw the picture. It's very good. <laughs> well, that's a good hunch. Uh, are you going to bet on him? Who's riding him? No coward. <laughs> a great jockey. Yeah, see, he also rode design for Livy, you know. <laughs> uh, Mary, Mary, who do you like in the Derby? John Bester. I think he looks cute in the derby. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, Mary, when will you stop telling old jokes? Huh? When uh, Don Bester stops wearing old derby. Oh. <laughs> Look at that hat he's got on now. Well, he doesn't always wear it, Mary. He's just breaking it in for his trombone, you know. Say, <laughs> hey, Parker, who do you like in the derby? Hmm? I like singing wood. Uh, you singers certainly stick together, don't you? <laughs> Say, Jack, where'd all those horses get their names? Well, Mary, the cavalcade is named after a picture, you see, so is Matta Harry. And Sergeant Byrne is named after a police sergeant. And Bazaar, well, you know what a bazaar is. Sure, every woman wears one. <laughs> well, that's where they get their names. Now, what about that telegram, Jack? Aren't you going to make a bet? Say, I haven't missed a derby yet. Give me that phone. Hello? Hello, operator, give me circle 79970. Oh? Hello, is this you, Tom? Yeah. This is Jack Benny. I want to place a bet on the Derby. What do you want? Two dollars on cavalcade. To win or play? To show. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, Steve Brody took a chance, you know. <laughs> Say, Jack, I'd like to take half of your bet. Okay, Bester, you can take half. That makes it a dollar apiece. Hey, can I get in on this too, Jack? Sure, Parker. You can have half of mine. That'll be 50 cents apiece. Eh? Brother, can you share a dime of that bet? Okay, Mary. Say, Jack, where'd you make that bet? Circle 79970. Oh, Give me that phone. Hey, Bester, he must have a tip on something. I think so. Hello, operator. Give me circle 79970. Oh. Right. Hello, is this you, Tom? Yeah. This is Don Wilson. General Tire, straight, place, and show. Okay. Uh, who's riding them? All the smart automobile owners. Okay, Tom. Goodbye. Hey, Ben, I hope your jockey is non-skid. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, we all made our bet. Singing Wood, I mean Frank Parker, will sing cocktails for two from the motion picture Murder in the Vanity. Play, Matter Harry. I mean, Don. Say, Jack. Jack, what are you so nervous about? What's the matter with you? Well, you know I got 40 cents on cavalcade. Let's see that racing form, will you? That was Frank Parker singing cocktails for two from the motion picture Murder in the Vanities. And now, ladies and gentlemen, last week, if you remember, we started our new series of plays with that stirring melodrama, The Lure of the City. And the following day, the Daily News gave us one and two-fifth stars which is equivalent to 138 in golf. And, uh, <clears throat> and here is what Damon Runyon said about our last play. Quote, the Yanks, with Ruth in the lineup and Crosetti at short, could be on top at the end of the season. <laughs> and here's what Admiral Byrd said about our play. Quote, I expect to remain at the South Pole another year, and it is quite cold today. Regards to my friend. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have many more of these testimonials too numerous to read. So tonight, by popular demand, we are staging that immoral, or immortal melodrama, The Hills of Old Kentucky, or Indiana, or for that matter, any place where there's a hill, because after all, a hill's a hill, you know. Uh, we have the original all-star cast here tonight who first appeared in this play at the old Bijou Theater. Many of you old-timers will remember how, after the first performance, this cast was hit over the head with the Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> You may also recall the plot of this drama, how the Diddleberries carried on a hundred-year-old feud with the Van Twift. This went on for years and years, and whenever a Diddleberry crossed the path of a Van Twift, or vice versa, another knock was added to the gun of versa vice. Incidentally, folks, I play the part of old man Van Twift. Mary will play my daughter, Elviry. 
And Don Wilson, who's quite a big fellow, will play one of the hills. <laughs> Jack, maybe you can get Edwin C. Hill to play it. Well, the more hills, the merrier. <laughs> Let's get ready. Don, uh, uh, play something while we put on our boots, you know. <laughs> Medley played by Don Bester and his Mountaineers. And your ears aren't so small either. Don, you don't... <laughs> you don't get the thought, Donald. <clears throat> and now for our dramatic offering, The Hills of Old Kentucky, or Indiana, or any place. <clears throat> Curtain. Music, Don. <laughs> She came rolling down the mountain, she came rolling down the mountain, she came rolling down the mountain, come up high. And did she slip? She didn't, cause her tires were non skidding. And that's a general idea. Awful. Besides, I'm a tired of living in these here hills. I don't see why we can't move to Louisville or Paris. Paris, France? No, Paris, Kentucky. Oh. Why are we moving out of here, Pappy? Someday, Elviry, but not until the last of them diddleberries are gone. Well, all I can say is these hills are pretty terrible for French Hill, too. But we can't leave, Elviry. Not until those diddleberries are wiped out. Gee, Pappy, what do they all do to us? Not blackface, Mary. Hillbilly, you know. Gee, Pappy, what did they do to us? A long, long story. Much before your time, Doctor. It was way back in 1830 when the first Diddleberry family moved to these parts and annoyed Weons. Who was? Weons. <laughs> the Van Van Swift were here first, headed by your great great grandpappy, old Lemuel Van Swift. Well, one day old Lim caught high diddleberry a cheating at solitaire. And that was the beginning of the feud. And it's been a going on ever since. There are only five of us left and two of them, so you can see it's pretty even. <laughs> and I ain't a going to leave here till every diddleberry is buried. I reckon that's a pretty long time to carry a grudge, a hundred years. Chuck Salvira, that ain't nothing. We hate people up here in these hills for no reason at all. It's just a racket. <laughs> well, Pappy, I reckon I'm going to skip down the village now and see a flicker picture. Yeah, what picture is showing down there this week? Francis X. Bushman. Well, it's about time they gave us some of that new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
You better be careful, Pappy, while I'm a-gone, or the diddleberries will get you. They better be careful. Hmm. Goodbye, Elvira. Goodbye, Pappy. And don't take any lead bullets. She came rolling down the mountain. She came rolling down the mountain. Who's that? It's me, Lamb. Come on in. Well, if it ain't Zeke Besta. What are you doing here, Zeke? I'm a Mountain William, too. A Mountain William? You mean a hillbilly, don't you, son? <laughs> yeah, if you want to use slang. You ought to wear boots with that full dress suit, Zeke. <clears throat> well, I didn't know I was coming here. Say, Zeke, you never met my old woman, have you? No. Well, I want you to meet her. Hey, Annie. Annie wants you to meet Zeke Bester. Glad to know you. And don't expect anything to eat, because you won't get anything. I don't want anything to eat. Well, you look hungry. Don't mind her, Zeke. She's always a clowning. Shut up. Happy, old happy. What's the matter, Elviry? I was coming up the hill and one of them diddleberries stopped me. What did he say, gal? He said you wasn't fit to sleep with your pigs. He did, eh? And what did you tell him? I told him you've been sleeping with pigs all your life and not one of them complained. And he wouldn't believe you, eh? Give me my rifle. I'll show him what a diddleberry can in Sullivan Swift. Oh, Pappy, don't. They're meaner than skunks. And trickier. Yes, Pappy, and they'll a killer you, uh. Not to me, uh. <laughs> Out of my way, Elvira. There they are now, uh, sitting on their porch, the rats. Take that, you skunk. Quick away from that window, gal. They might return it. They did. <laughs> Elviry, hop on that old mare. Ride into town, get the rest of us Van Twist. Yes, Captain? The horse is gone already. Catch the next one in town. <laughs> Wait a minute, drummer. Give her a chance to get on the horse. Okay. <laughs> a fine way to advertise general tires. <laughs> Here, Zeke, you guard that window. Whenever you see a diddleberry, fire. Duck, Lem. Well, it was an old hat anyway. <laughs> Must be Elvira coming back with the boy. Here they are, Pappy. Luke, Clem, and Zem. Where's Clem? He joined the diddleberry. You must be paying him more money. Come on in, boys. Hi, Lim. What's all the ruckus going around around here? Huh? What's the matter, Lim? Feud is on again, boys. There are five of us Van Swift here, and we can whip them. But we got to stick together. Right, Lim. Want something to eat before you start fighting? Yeah, we'll starve. Hey, Annie, fry five eggs. Five eggs coming up. Make that four eggs, Annie. <laughs> Well, there are only four of us Van Swifts left, and we got to stick together. Watch that window, Clem. Luke, you guard that door. And if you want me, I'll be in Kansas City. Three eggs, Annie. <laughs> well, there's three of us left, and we got to stick together. How do you want those eggs? On toast. Make it two. <laughs> all right, Clem. You and I are left all alone now, and we got to stick together. You said it, Pappy. Well, it looks as though I'll have to eat alone. <laughs> oh, they got me, Pappy. They got me. So long, Clem, and don't worry about it. I don't mind a going, Pappy. There's only one thing I regret. What's that, son? That I wasn't blow-off proof like the general tire. <laughs> oh, Pappy. That dirty rat. I'll show him a shooting down all my kin. I, Lemuel Van Swift, has got to stick together. Oh, yes, Annie. One egg. And he doesn't live here anymore. Oh, they got me. Happy, happy. I'm a going, Elviry. I'm a going. Don't worry, Pappy. I'll eat the egg. <laughs> General with the new silent safety tread is America's smartest tire. They add the final touch of style to any car. Your new car deserves the best, so why not let the General Tire dealer arrange to put blowout proof generals on your new car? The additional cost is slight. You'll enjoy that feeling of security no matter how fast you drive. Remember, General is the patented blowout proof tire and is sold only by the General Tire dealer. 
If you're looking for real bargains, you'll find them there, too. Racks full of new and used tires that have been exchanged for blowout-proof generals. The last member of the fifth program in the new General Tire Series. We'll be with you again next and I hope all you folks enjoyed our little feud tonight. And speaking of feuds, there are very few automobile owners who will not agree that the general blowout proof tire is the best that money can buy. You can buy them at your own general tire dealer. Yes, thank you, Jack. You're welcome, Don. I'm speaking of feuds, Jack. I'm hungry. Good night, folks. <laughs> Don Wilson. This is the National Broadcasting Company.